Copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles police calling all cars. Attention all cars to broadcast 262 regarding a robbery. No description of suspects in this case. That is all. Harmon. Friends, the cast of Calling All Cars and I wish to thank each one of you who, during the last week, made any kind of a purchase at a Rio Grande station. For those of you who didn't hear last week's show, I will explain briefly that we are making a test during December of listener loyalty to this program. We of Calling All Cars want an expression of your interest and friendliness. And after five years and 261 broadcasts, we feel that it's not too much of a favor to ask you to make one call at a Rio Grande dealer's this week, whether it be for a quart of Rio Lube or some cracked gasoline. The size of the purchase is of no consequence or consideration in this test, I assure you. True, we feel that an exposure to our products will be habit-forming. But the purpose of our appeal to you is to prove to our company and dealers that our radio friends of long standing would respond to a fair request Will you promise yourself to stop at a Rio Grande station once this week as a personal favor to us of calling all cars? I feel it's one of those things you feel good about doing, and it will constitute a Christmas gesture that we will sincerely appreciate. And now, on with your show. The story we are to hear tonight has been taken from the confidential files of the Los Angeles Police Department. We have therefore asked Captain of Detectives, L. L. Curtis, to open our program. It has been said that when thieves fall out, just men get their dues. Had it not been for the falling out of the thieves involved in tonight's story, the job of up apprehending the criminals would have been much greater. However, the incident patience and intelligent deductive work of the Investigating officers led to the ultimate arrest and conviction of the perpetrators of this crime. With an almost perfect setup, the criminals learned that crime did not pay. What reward they did get, I shall tell you at the end of the program. Inside the living room of a cheap boarding house in Salt Lake City, a mechanical piano blared a ribald ballad. Hiya, Sally. How's the boy? Sure, I'm just tired of this dump I'm being. Yeah, how long have you been here? Two years come All Saints Day. That's two years I've been listening to that same piece of music. You don't call that stuff the old lady's playing music, do you? Nope. But she does. Then why don't you leave here? Well, it's getting drunk I'm going to be doing when I get off here. Yeah? When do you get off duty? Twelve o'clock. Well, then you just got to have an hour to go. I'll be back and we'll get drunk together. Sullivan, get up, you lazy lout. Do you hear me? Get up and open this door. You know, the devil take you. Go away from the door and leave me alone. Sullivan, open this door before I kick it in. Someday it's strangling that woman I'm going to be with me two hands. Sullivan! Keep your shirt on. A head like mine, there's no racket that I can stand this morning. Well, you'll have a worse head than you've got now when I finish with you. Now, oh, you red-headed old Benji, what is it? Well, where's the money? What money? What money, says he, standing there like a blooming infant. And I repeat it, what money? The money you took from the safe, you Irish rat. I took no money from the safe, and I'm not a rat. You be keeping a civil tongue in your head, or I'll bet you over the eye. Don't lie to me, Dennis Sullivan. The safe is open, and the money's gone. Hmm, it was there last night when I closed the office. Well, it ain't there now. Wait a minute. Where's George Music? I suppose he's in his room. Where do you expect him to be? I expect him to be in purgatory if he's done what I think he has. Is it rousing the house you want to be doing? You are no mouse yourself, you know. Just oh, sleeping like a lamb, the devil is. Well, try the door if you're so bent in seeing him. Oh, by all the saint. Tis like I thought. His bed ain't been slept in. And he's gone, and with him's gone your money. Come to think about it, I remember now. He was unusual curious about that safe. 
Come on. And where do you think you're going? To look for me wallet. Don't be trying to think up any funny stories, Mr. Sullivan. Hold your tongue. Yeah. The wallet's gone. And in it was the combination to the safe. I remember now. I was showing music this picture. And we were drinking, and he poured me another drink, and that's the last I remember. Well, that's just too bad. Because there was 200 bucks in that safe, and you're going to work right here and pay it back. Heaven give me strength to keep me hands off the woman. It is the morning of a spring day in Los Angeles. Two men sit in the lobby of a hotel. Suddenly, one of them arises and motions to the other. Together, they walk briskly toward a man with dark glasses, tapping his way through the crowded lobby with a white cane. And that's him, all right. I remember the story. Don't worry about me. I'm all set. Okay. Here goes. Oh, pardon me, uh, but aren't you Jonathan Flynn? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Well, my name's Music, Mr. Flynn. George Music. And this is Mr. Paul Yates. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Music. Mr. Yates? Say, uh, Mr. Flynn, is there some place around here where we can talk without being disturbed? Well, what did you wish to discuss? I'm rather busy this morning. Oh, we won't be a minute. Oh, no. Uh, we'd like to talk in private. The lobby sounds as if it were rather crowded. Well, we could go to my room if you wish. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's uh, fine. You'll have to pardon me, but I can't hurt her very well. I'm blind, you know. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll say. Well, let me take your arm. Thank you. No. Uh, this is a nice uh, hotel, Mr. Flynn. I like it very much here. Everyone takes very good care of me. Uh, here's the elevator. Watch your step, please. Uh, how long you live here, Mr. Flynn? Oh, 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 I haven't been here very long. I should say it's about three weeks, yes. Three weeks. And what floor are you on? Six. Room 619, three doors to the right. Say, that's a lovely ring you have there. Mm. How many carats? Slightly over two. That, uh, that tie pin must be over a carat, too. Yes, it weighs... Sixth a... floor. <coughs> yes, uh, I was going to say, it weighs almost a carat and a half. Hmm. Family heirlooms? Why are you so interested in my diamonds? Oh, no reason at all. <laughs> I imagine everyone admires them. Oh. Here's your room, Mr. Flynn. Oh, yes. yes. should be cigars and cigarettes on the smoking stand. And, uh, do be seated, please. All right, don't care do. And now then, gentlemen, what did you wish to discuss with me? Well, you see, Mr. Flynn, we're from the Investment Diamond Brokers Exchange. Here's my card. You forget I'm blind. I must take your word for it. Oh, of course, I forgot. But as I was going to say, you, you can understand now why we were interested in your diamonds. Oh, yes. And naturally, we don't want people to know we're diamond brokers because we might get robbed. Yeah, you see, we, we always carry a supply with us. By the way, did you have a drink? Hmm? I got a flask in my pocket. Drink? Yeah, that's a good idea. You'll join us, won't you, Mr. Flynn? <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, ordinarily I don't drink, but uh, well, perhaps a little sip might tip me up. I haven't been feeling so well lately. Well, then this is just what you need. A little pick-me-up. Yeah, help yourself. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Pretty hot stuff, huh, Mr. Flint? <coughs> that... Too strong for me. Mm, gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Flynn. <laughs> I guess me and Paul are pretty used to it. We don't seem to mind it. No. Uh, but about those diamonds. Yeah. Uh, would you care to part with them? Well, uh, not exactly. No. Well, we're prepared to give you a good price one. Yeah. More than you expect. Uh, I really don't want to sell them, gentlemen. Well, we're not in any hurry. Maybe if we sit here long enough, you'll change your mind. I'm sure you will, Flynn. I don't... I don't want to sell. A few gentlemen will... Will excuse me. It's working as well. Yeah. I have no problem sellers. Well, I said, come on, get to work. Okay. I got the ring and the tie pin. You search this half of the room and I'll take the other. Work fast. We might be interrupted. Okay. <laughs> Pretty slick. Like taking candy from a baby. A 
few hours later, Flynn recovered sufficiently to call the police. Detective Bud Curtis and Carl Williams are ushered into the disheveled chaos of open drawers and overturned furniture. Mute evidence of the thoroughness of the two thieves' search. Flynn, still under the stupefying effect of the knockout drops, sits crumpled in his chair. And you say they gave their names as Music and Yeats? Yes, yes, that's right. Have you any idea what they might look like? None, except that Music sounded like a big man. And Yeats might have been uh, some kind of foreigner. You mean he spoke with an accent? No, no. It's, it's just that when you're blind, as I am, you, you form ideas as to what the person looks like. I can't explain it. You just feel it. Were the diamonds insured? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've already notified the insurance company. Do you ever remember hearing either of the two voices before? No, sir. No, I, I never did, no. Well, Bud, looks like we don't have much to work on. Not much. Did anyone see you with these men, Mr. Flynn? Well, the lobby was crowded, but I'm afraid that isn't much help. How about the elevator boy? I'll call the desk and get him up here. This is Carl Williams from police headquarters. Send the elevator boy up here right away. Uh, just a moment, I'll find out. Do you remember which elevator you rode in? Hmm? Oh, I, I think it was the middle one. The middle one? Okay, thanks. We'll have the room checked for fingerprints. Maybe something might show up that could help us. Hey, what's that card you have in your hand, Mr. Flynn? Hmm? Card? Oh, I, oh wait, wait, this is the card music handed me when they said it was connected with the diamond brokerage firm. Well, let's see it. Hmm. Well, this doesn't help much. See what you make out of it, bud. George Music, linoleum salesman. Huh. No address. Well, it's better than nothing. I tell you what, Carl, you stay here and question the elevator boy. Okay. I'm going to start making the rounds of all the small printing presses in town. Then followed days of endless walking, futile searching unanswered questions. Apparently, the card had not been printed in Los Angeles. Curtis and Williams had about given up the search for the time being when an unexpected visitor dropped into headquarters. You're the detective that called on me a few days ago, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yes, you own the little printing shop on South Spring, don't you? Yeah. Take a look at this card. Music? Where'd you get this? I... I made it. Yes, I know, but... And here's the card I made it from. By George... Exactly like the one the blind man had. Hey, Carl, come in here a minute. Okay. When was he uh, into your place? Yesterday. I was pretty rushed with work and it never dawned on me until about an hour ago. I came here right away. What'd you find? Look at these. Well, that's more like it. When's he coming in for these? Well, that's the sad part of the story. He's already come and got them. What, what do you mean? Got yes, them? I'm sorry. If I'd only thought sooner. But here's a telephone number that might be of help to you. Let me see it. Where'd you get this? Well, while he was waiting for me to sw- uh, wrap the cards up, he phoned this number. He couldn't get it the first time, so he wrote it on the wall with a pencil. Well, Mr. Mitchell, perhaps you've been a big help to us. Tracing the telephone number, the officers learned that the address is an apartment house on Ingram Street. They contact the manager. You the manager of this apartment? Yes. We're from police headquarters, and we're looking for a George Music and a Paul Yates. Are they living here? Music is. I'll see if he's in. And when you ring the apartment, make some excuse for calling. Don't let him know we're here. Sure. Well, I guess there's nobody in. They don't answer. Well, we'll wait. Mind if we step into the office? No, not at all. Come in. Kind of small in here. Sit down. A couple of chairs. Thanks. Thank you. If it isn't too prying, what do you want music for? And Yates. For a diamond theft. They stole from a blind man. A blind man? What a cowardly trick. Yeah. They doped him and robbed him in a hotel room downtown. Well, music ought to be in fairly soon. Tell me, Mr. Uh... My name is Simmons. Glad to know you, Mr. Simmons. This is Carl Williams, and I'm Bud Curtis. How do you do? Glad to know uh, I was going to ask you, Mr. Simmons, what you knew about these men. Well, not very much that it'd be of value to you. Uh, music said he sold linoleum. I've got his card around here someplace. <laughs> sure passed him out, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. What else you know? Well, that's about all. He always carries a roll of linoleum in the back of his car. Uh, his wife doesn't... Wife? 
Oh, yes. Yeah, he and Yates are both married. Hmm. You know anything about Yates? No. He comes in here to see music quite often, though. I never... Pardon me just a moment. Do you have a George Music or a Paul Yates registered here? Yes. Won't you come in? Yeah, thanks. I will. Oh, I... Didn't mean to intrude. Excuse me. All right, come in. Well, I just wanted to... What do you want with music and Yates? Well, I can't possibly see what business that is of yours. No? Does this badge make it clear? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, what's so funny? (laughs) This. Yeah, look. (laughs) Well, you're a detective, (laughs) too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I work for an insurance company. Well, we might as well join forces. My name's Carl Williams, and this is Bud Curtis, right. Mr. Simmons' manager here. Well, my name's Johnson. Right. 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 Mr. Johnson. Yeah, we're waiting for music now. Okay, we might as well all nab him at the same time. Give him a real welcome when he comes in. The hours dragged into late evening, but George Music failed to appear. It became evident that the vigil would have to be kept through the night. The apartment house manager offered the officers a vacant room across the hall from music's apartment, and the three men moved in, prepared to wait. Uh, This keyhole doesn't afford the best view of the door across the hall. We ought to make a peephole. Hey, that's a good idea. I got a little gimlet in my briefcase. (laughs) Yeah? (laughs) You came all prepared, huh? Here, let me have it. I'll bore the hole. It's past midnight now, and he still hasn't shown up. I got a hunch he skipped. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. Then there's still Mrs. Music. That is, if she hasn't skipped, too. There. Now we can see without stooping down and breaking our backs. Yeah, that's great. Why don't you go out and get us some sandwiches, Johnson? Well, that wouldn't be a bad idea. There's a cafe down the street, and I can... Quiet. What is it? Somebody's across the hall. Hmm. A woman. Mrs. Music, I'll bet. Yep. Must have been. Come on, let's go over and have a talk with her. Hey, you'd better not let her know we're across the hall. Officers, open up. Well? You Mrs. Music? Yes. Fine. We'll come in have a little talk. Just the four of us. What right of you to come in here? Well, we just wanted to get some information, and we thought you might be able to help us. Surely you can't object to helping us. Well, come on in. But I can't be of any help to you. I might as well tell you now. Thanks. Well, this is a nice place you have here, Mrs. Music. How'd you know my name? The manager told us. Yeah. Well, what do you want? I want to get to bed. Sure. All we wanted to know was if you had any idea where we could find your husband. Not the slightest. When did you see him last? Oh, I don't know. A few days ago. Why? You know a man, uh, a blind man named Flynn? Say, what is all this anyway? We're trying to recover some stolen diamonds. Well, not that your husband had anything to do with them, but he might be able to help us. I'm sure my husband couldn't be of any help to you. Good night, gentlemen. And you don't know where your husband is now? No. He's a linoleum salesman, you know. He travels on the road quite a bit. And now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, please... Oh, sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Music. Uh, Good night. Realizing that their vigil in the apartment might be a long one, the officers determined to install a dictograph in the suspected apartment. Accordingly, they conferred with the manager. How long will you boys need to complete the job? Oh, it shouldn't take more than a couple of hours. Well, I think I can arrange it for you. Oh. She likes ball games, and tomorrow there's a double header at Wrigley Field. I think if I ask her to go with me, she will. Say, that sounds all right. Yeah, she's up there now. Call her on the phone. Find out if she'll go. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Music. Uh, this is Mr. Simmons. Say, I'm going to the ball game tomorrow afternoon. I thought maybe you might like to go along. Okay. Yeah, leave about 1.30. Say, better still, make it 12. We can grab a sandwich on the way. Oh, that's quite all right, Mrs. Music. Uh, glad you can go. What did you say, Mr. Simmons? All set. You boys will be free for four or five hours. <laughs> No use, fellas. She's got a plug in the door. I can't get the key in. Now what'll we do? Well, there's only one thing to do. 
Go down the air shaft and then through the bathroom window. Say, that's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Johnson can lower you and me down from the roof. Okay. It shouldn't take the two of us very long to get the dictograph wired up. Hey, you better take a table leaf along Mm -hmm. and put it across the shaft from one end to the other. I noticed the apartment next to music has a window just opposite. Okay, let's go. What about the wires? Well, we can run those out the window and up over the roof to the air shaft and then in through our bathroom window. The most important thing is to get finished before she gets back. Bancroft's coming up. Maybe we can get a homer. A homer? Say, Mr. Simmons, would you care very much if we left? Ah, uh, why, we haven't been here but a half hour. I know, but I feel uneasy. I- I'm afraid. I don't get you. Well, I don't know whether you knew it or not, but three police officers were to see me last night. It made me pretty upset. Police officers? What in the world did they want? Oh, nothing. They were looking for some diamond thief. But it's just made me uneasy. Somebody might try to break into the apartment. Anyway, we've seen enough of the game. Well, if you think you'd better, I suppose we... Oh! Oh! I told you he'd hit one! (laughs) He's gonna make it! Change your mind about going home? Oh, well, I guess so. There's really nothing in the apartment of any value anyway. Good. I, I thought for a minute you were going to drag me away from a darn good ball game. Uh-uh. Hey, boy, bring me a couple of bottles of pop. Wow. Well. Two dogs. There's nothing like soda pop and hot dogs to make a real ball game. Yes, out the window and over the roof. Think she'll be able to see it? Yeah, when a couple of artists like us get through. That is a pretty good idea of mine to hide it in the chandelier, even if I do say so myself. I still like the curtain, but then it isn't as artistic as the chandelier. No, of course not. It looks like part of the fixture. <laughs> say, don't forget to clean up every speck of musk. Yeah. There's well. a piece of insulation over there by the lamp. I got it. Come on, let's get out of here. We still got plenty to do in our own apartment. Okay. Give Johnson the signal. I already did. He's lowering the rope. Here, give me the wire. Here. I got the tools. Careful now. Don't push that table leaf away. You won't have anything to stand on, and we'll miss the rope. Don't worry. Gosh, it's sure going to be great to have a cigarette again. Two hours and a half in that stuffy apartment. Yeah, me too. Okay, there's the rope. On your way. Careful now. Can you manage those tools? Yeah, yeah. Hurry up. I want to finish rigging this thing up before she gets back. We won't have time to test it. All right, let her go, Johnson. Somebody's coming up the hall. Can you see who it is? Yeah, yeah, that's them, all right. Turn it on. Okay. Keep it down until she closes the door. She might hear herself. Okay, turn it up. They both went in and shut the door. I'm awful glad you enjoyed the game, Mrs. Music. Well, it was very nice of you to ask me. Won't you sit down a minute? Well, no, thanks. I've got some things to do. Some other time, maybe. Say, by the way, everything all right? I mean, nobody broke in. No. I'm sorry to have worried like I did. I hope I didn't spoil the game for you. No. Cut that thing. You've got to open the door. Right. Well, it works. Now all we have to do is sit and wait. And look yeah. and listen. Not very exciting, but I'll lay you two to one. We nab music and Yates. Want to bet? Days went by, and though Mrs. Music had many callers, the officers learned nothing that was of value to them. Then one day, almost three weeks after the robbery, a short, heavy set woman knocked on the door of the apartment across the hall. Get the dictograph ready. We've got another visitor. A new one. All set. Man or woman? Woman. Okay, turn it on. Well, well, come in, come in. How are you? I'm all right. Pretty tired of waiting. Then you've heard something? Yes. Paul sent me word yesterday. Hey, that oh. must be Mrs. Yates. Yeah. What'd he say? Where's George? I don't know. He said for you to get in touch with Louie at the farmer's garage. Is that all? No. He said Louie would get a letter and there'd be one for you inside. Now I gotta go. I shouldn't have come here in the first place. We might be one. Nah. but you're going to have company right behind you. Boy, I thought for a while...
out we were going to lose her in that traffic jam. Uh, that taxi driver must be a friend of hers, judging by the way he took chances getting down here. Let's get over there. Yeah, she's just gone in the service department. Evidently, Louie is a mechanic. You going to take her down to headquarters? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? I think we're better. May I ask some questions there? Ask her. Well, you better get ready. Here she comes. 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 Just a minute. Suppose you wait. Just a minute. Suppose you wait and open that letter at headquarters. Hey, wait a minute. I ain't done nothing. We didn't say you had. We just want you to read that letter at headquarters. Now, are you coming along peaceably or do we have to drag you? Okay, okay. I'll come. But you guys got me all wrong. I ain't done nothing. Well, let's hope not. Here, I'll take charge of the letter. At police headquarters, the letter was opened and immediately telegraph wires carried a message. Los Angeles Police Department, Omaha, Nebraska. Pick up George Music, alias Byron King, registered International House, Omaha, wanted for diamond robbery. Music was taken into custody and returned to California. Sit down, Mr. Flynn. Thank you. Uh, I want you to listen to a suspect we brought back on this diamond case. Williams, will you bring in music? Sure. Come in here, music. Okay. George, is this the fellow you stole the diamond ring from? I never stole no diamond ring from nobody. Oh, yes, you did. That's the man, Mr. Curtis. He's one of the men who gave me the knockout drink and robbed me. Well, what about it, music? Ah, oh, nuts. What do I care? Sure, I stole it. So what? What'd you do with it? Well, it's a long story, Lieutenant. You see, I I had the diamond on me when I met a friend of mine on the street downtown. A guy I used to know back in Salt Lake City. His name was Sullivan. Well, he knows a dame, so he says, who can get rid of this hot ice. So I gives him the ring, and he says, you wait here and I'll be right back. And I was sap enough to do it. Well, he never did come back. I found out later he went to San Diego and sold the ring. He got 1500 bucks for it. Yeah, what did you get out of it? I didn't get nothing. He double-crossed me. The lousy crook. <laughs> In 
in just a moment, Captain Curtis will conclude our program. But before I forget it, unless you forget, as some of you did last week, may I remind you that your purchase of Rio Grande products is the most sincere form of applause for the past, present, and future of calling all cars. See your Rio Grande dealer in the morning. And tune in next week as a customer and friend. And now, Captain Curtis. Music was sent to prison for his participation in the robbery, and his companion, Yates, was later found in Oregon. However, it was impossible to extradite him because the blind victim could not furnish an identification. Sullivan was later located in Salt Lake City and was brought back and charged with receiving stolen property <clears throat> a, a, and received a sentence in the county jail. Thank you, Captain Curtis. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars to cancellation on broadcast 262 regarding a robbery. Suspect in this case was arrested in Omaha, Nebraska. That is all. Harm on. narrator Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this time, Rio Grande will present The Case of the Poisoning Jezebel. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.